when people talk about black women being obese, I hate it. Because it becomes a way to blame us for a set of conditions that we didn't create. We're moving, we're taking care of kids, but our food quality suffers. We are living in the Trump era. And look, those policies kill our people. You can't get access to good health care, good insurance. The research says that black women, when we do the same diets as white women, we lose less weight and we lose it slower, even when we're following the diet than our white women counterparts. And what, and what public health practitioners think is that our stress responses in the body change our metabolism. It's literally that the racism that you're experiencing and the struggle to make ends meet actually means the diet don't work for you the same. Racism has made us obese. So, uh, PC, let's start with you. Like, you, you know, we start with the clip. Overall thoughts. When you first saw the, the first clip and the second clip, put them both together. What are your thoughts? You're on mute. What are your thoughts about it? All I can say is, is there a component to racism about in terms of our diet? You know, structurally, Henry Kissinger went out and uh, generated the war on the third the third world, which basically was like um, white explaining to say that, you know, um, people who are not, who, are, who don't identify as Caucasians in the world. Um, that was in the, I think, I believe, I believe that was in like 1974, he presented that to the United Nations. Um, and so there's some validity to that in terms of uh, in our community where we don't get the freshest food. Um, we have a lot of food deserts in our community and so forth. Um, so there's some validity there. Now, in terms of the foods we do choose to access and the way we live, you know what I'm saying? It's not something we can't counter. So to, to say those things is to render us powerless to do anything about it. Yes, is it structural racism? to flood our communities with bodegas and corner stores that, you know, um, serve us pro uh, processed foods and processed meats. Yeah. But can you do something about it? Absolutely. You have whole communities that have decided that they're going to start growing and farming food. They build a network of greenhouses. They have co-ops that they produce. So, um, and, and actually the food is relatively cheaper in those particular locations because the people that are part of the co-ops actually invest in those things. So, you know, yeah, it's, it's structural racism, but to say to blame us for gaining weight and being out of shape and this, that, and the other, I think that's a little absurd at this point, especially in 2023, but everybody has a car, access to those places. That you, there is no segregation anymore. There's some communities you might not want to frequent, but there are fresh you know, supermarkets that serve fresh food. We have farming communities that provide um, those types of food. The problem is we want everything Instacart. We want everything microwavable. We don't want everything quick, fast, and in a hurry because we spend too much time focused on leisure and not enough time focused on getting ourselves healthy. Does stress, cortisol, and bad cholesterol, does that affect our health? Yes, it does. But... Now that you know it, it's up to you to do something about it. So I land my plane right there. Okay, that's a quick land. So, I mean, yes. Uh, structural racism is this, like you said, the that we do have food deserts, we do have the stress levels, the the um the, all, um, all these factors all, do exist, but it's a, it. It's a disingenuous pitch. Let's just call it. Let's just put it on the table. It's a disingenuous pitch what she's pitching. Uh, but I'm going to just say that piece right there to leave a cliffhanger and go ahead and go to Pat. What's your overall thoughts on the clip? Uh, so I'm going to play a game. I've been thinking about this, right? I'm going to play the game that I've been Ooh, playing with. Game. With, uh, with most of the people that I've been talking to, right, uh, over the last few months. The game is called Baby You Right. Right. How does thou play that game, Pat? Uh, we we gonna have a nice demonstration right now with this because PC hit on a lot of great points. Um, in terms of like you know, 
adding a lot of validity and credibility to what she was saying uh, while also, you know, letting us know that it it is not that simple. It ain't like it ain't what she's saying. There's some there's some kernels of truth. Um, right. Well, where I'm going to go with it is just say, baby, you're right. You're 100 percent right. Stress. Right. Which which can be caused by racism, uh, can cause the body to release cortisol. She's 100 percent right. PC touched on that. High cortisol um, levels, yeah. After the adrenaline rush that you get from being in the fight or flight mode, which is typically what a stress response is, uh, you get cortisol pumped in uh, to, to, to increase your ability to function with a lot of energy, right? So you get insulin flooded through your system, right? Hello, type two, right? Um, you get all of these other things that are going to happen. Sugar cravings increase um food cravings in general increase the hormones like leptin and all these other things that tell your body you're full stop eating those get negatively impacted um hormonal or or emotional eating kicks in all these things kick in that get you to a place to where uh not only are you having cravings to eat but your desire to feel full is lower all of that stuff is true right all of that stuff is a hundred percent fat not only that your body fights to control to maintain fat stores it shuts down certain unnecessary processes processes that are deemed unnecessary so your metabolism might slow down so more energy can be devoted towards other things like getting you out of danger or consuming stuff to make sure you have energy to get out of the danger um all of these things are true so your metabolism might be slow you feel fuller slower you're hungrier you're emotional and you're craving food all of these things like that that's a recipe for being unhealthy uh so baby you're 100 percent right you know what the greatest counter to stress is exercise exercise Look, baby, you're right. How much do you exercise? Because exercising ain't so that you can lose weight. It's for body recomposition, building muscle so that you maintain mobility, fitness ability, and the ability to move and maintain space. But it's also for lowering stress levels so that all those things that you're talking about don't have as big an impact on you as possible. Now, the truth of the matter is, you can eat whatever you want. Like in full quality matters, but yes. it doesn't matter to the point that they're trying to make. Um, because there are a lot of people that have poor quality food that are not overweight. The problem you're having is that you eat more than you burn. That's simple. Portion control, lady. Like, so now we're talking about discipline. You know what else causes a lot of stress? She didn't say racism. She didn't say it. She said racism. You know what causes more stress than racism? Constantly looking for ways to be the victim. Yes. That yes. causes a shitload of stress. So if racism is causing you to lose, uh, gain five pounds, I would say refusing to accept accountability is causing you to gain 10, 15. Yeah. 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 So... But even to the other point she made, like, look, we it's been well known. Black people' body densities are different than white people's. Why are you? The scale is not even what you should be looking at if you're worried about being fit and healthy. Like the scale is not. You think uh, people in fitness competitions, like the the all of those people, you think all of them. Are in uh, uh, some of the I've seen a guy I saw a dude the other day. He was five nine, one hundred seventy pounds, seventy five pounds, right? According to the BMI, he overweight. Five nine, one hundred seventy five pounds, but he was fit. He wasn't jacked, but he was jacked enough to where you could see this brother is not overweight. But it if he step on the scale, yeah, if he step on the scale, he gonna have some problems. Stop looking at the fucking scale. 
Look at right. body composition. Look at body composition. Now, but so, right there. so the angle I'm taking is, I just thought about, well, for one, I've been an athlete and been in the fitness world or around the fitness world pretty much my whole life. It's the day the young lady who was a trainer. Um, I know a whole bunch of trainers and I see specifically black women. I see black women losing weight all the time. Not a lot of black women, but I see the black women. No, I'm just being real because because <laughs> no, most black women, <laughs> most black women and most black men don't work out like this shit. Right. But. The black women who I see, and I'm saying black women because that was a black woman in the clip. The black women that I see who work out on a regular basis and actually take it serious, they lose weight. So working out is, like you said, that's a key factor. But the diets that we have, yes, diets are, food isn't what it used to be. We all know food isn't what it used to be. But I just can't accept her saying or anybody saying that racism is the main reason or one of the biggest contributing factors to the rising obesity rates in black America. Well, well go ahead. No, I was going to say, I push back on the food quality argument in general. I'm going to get to that. about fitness but go oh, ahead i'm sorry but, but yeah but i'm a well well food quality in relation to fitness that's what you're saying because i was just yeah, no i'm food saying quality food overall. quality in relation to obesity if we're talking okay. food quality in relation to general fitness i get it but if we're talking food quality in relation to obesity that's that's not the arc that's not the hill we want to go to to fight right but also i mean we can just look at history if we look at history we can see that black people faced more stress more danger more in your face racism talk about high cortisol levels let's go back 100 years but 100 matter of fact if we go back to the 1970s to before the 1970s the obesity rate isn't as near as what it was as i mean isn't as near it's what it is now if we just go back to the 1970s so why wasn't obesity rates skyrocketed out of out of the atmosphere 50 years ago 70 years ago 100 years ago 200 years ago we were moving because we got we got to realize that if we even go back to the 1970s more black people were moving we're more sedentary now we move less and we eat more and that's just Americans. The American obesity rate has skyrocketed. So how do you what what is her what is her reason for the obesity rate in America itself skyrocketing? Well, I don't think Help she has a, a dog to fight. <laughs> I don't know. She, um, I hit on something before. This uh, this 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 whole notion of fighting real hard to be a victim the perennial victims yes is not you know accountability and we used to say it's like kryptonite but I, I got i saw a better comparison accountability is like sunlight to a vampire and in a lot of these situations man and so it comes down to you know, comes down to people basically just being accountable for where they are and, and, and what they're doing in their circumstance and situation. If there's a media coming toward Earth and we can actually do something about it, I'm not going to be one of those people crying around, woe is me, the end of days. Nah, but I'm, we're going to be working on how to, you know, blow that shit out the sky. You know what I'm saying? Um, at least salvage as much of the earth as we possibly can. But we have too many of our people who are comfortable being victims because once you're a victim, you don't have to do anything about the situation or circumstances. 
you can just lay there and 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 no matter what happens, it's somebody else's fault. There's no culpability right. to right. your situation. Now I can recall back in um when the Nuremberg trials occurred in um I believe it was 1947, 1948, the end of World War II, when we, when they had all the Nazis on trial. And they asked them, you know, why did you consistently uh you know, um, follow, you know, why did you consistently kill your, um, the Holocaust, uh, the Holocaust victims? And the thing they said was well, we were just following orders. And um, there was a scientist by the name of Dr. Milgram who did an experiment 15 years later where they actually showed the same type of, you know, um, same type of obedience to authority in which people were pressing the button on an imaginary buzzer that they thought they were dealing lethal electric shocks to people. And like 40% mm -hmm. of the people actually followed through based on that. Well, that's, you know, that's, that's based on responding to some type of authority to consistently mindlessly follow through in a certain type of behavior. We don't have that here. We have, Evidence. We have doctors. We've had. We have natural, um, naturopathists. Uh, I believe that's what they're called. Natural, uh, natural doctors. Yeah, naturopathic doctors. Naturopathic, yeah, naturopathic, homeopathic. We have all of those in place, everywhere. With with proper diets, with proper Man. instructions, um, working out. We have. I mean, fitness videos, <laughs> uh, books. This is like Gregory this, this was. Everywhere. Dick Gregory was one of the biggest health gurus or uh, 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 biggest faces, and he wrote the specific books. We had black people talking about diets and being healthy 50 years, 60, 70 years ago. Yeah. So, so where we are right now with it all, you know what I'm saying? Um, <coughs> it really, listen, I'm in supermarkets all the time, and I'm down the way. I see what goes in people's carts. It's the worst type of food you can you can fucking believe. Um, it's the type of foods that you know are uh, causing major issues with digestion, causing um, there's all these different um, dehydrated um, and hydrated oils and saturated oils um, that are added to a lot of the food. The uh, MSG, all these different Taste things that the people. Are yeah, well, the sugar addiction is more important because that's the main that ingredient too. in all this other stuff. That too. And um, and that's why a lot of people don't, you know, but the kid, but, you know, it's funny, right? Because as I'm watching the first, the second video, which is even more hilarious. Well, um, <laughs> talking about the eye. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> The diet is racist you know because saying? it because you can't eat what you like to right. eat. So that so, right. so the diet is racist. Okay. Okay. And okay. nobody tell that's, 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 that, that, that's pure laziness. Let, let's just let's just be let's just call it what it is. Too many, too many of us I have think... gotten lazy. Too many of us have gotten lazy when it comes to our personal health. Let's just be let's mm -hmm. just call it men, black men and black women. Uh, at least black women go to the doctor with theirs. Black men, we don't even go to the doctor with ours, but we have gotten lazy when it comes to our health and we take advantage of the things that make our life more convenient that allows us to have a more sedentary lifestyle. Like, you have to get up and move. You have to exercise. I know that. Yeah, it's the car, all this stuff, door dash, it's messed up. Well, and I want to say this. Um, I was looking on my computer trying to find the study that I read. And if I find it, I'll send it to you guys. And Joe, you can you know, do whatever you want mm -hmm. with it. But it was a study, and it talked about how back in, they did a review. Because I used to be on the move shit, too, until I started really looking into it. It ain't even the movement, because all the way up until the, the 90s, uh, physical exertion in America 
has stayed static relatively. Like we didn't start to really drop off in terms of physical movement until the 2000s. Right. Um, But like you pointed out in the 70s, there was, there started to be a shift in weight gain. Yep. So that the shift in weight gain started 30 years prior to the decrease in activity levels. 